Good morning. Let's start this morning with prayer. Father, we dedicate this morning to you. Be glorified, Lord, in all that we do. Hallelujah. Get exalted, be exalted, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, on this Sunday, we're going to try to um, cover Genesis 43, 26 through 34. Let's see how far we can go. This is Webster's Bible translation. And when Joseph came home, <clears throat> they brought him to the present, which was in their hand into the house and bowed themselves to Joseph, to the earth. They bow down, they prostrate, fled on their belly. <laughs> Pope commentary says, thus they fulfill the dream of the sheaves. Genesis 37, 7, Genesis 18, 2, Genesis 19, 1. And this is sim symbolic because he said the sheaves, you know, like the, the grain, the tall grain, they were all bowing. And what, what are they there for? To get grains. So it was a prophetic vision. Prophetic is very difficult to understand unless you are the one who intimately know and only the recipient kind of get it. But sometimes it takes many years as it has, on this case, 22 years. And when he asked them of their welfare, or he asked them how they were, Joseph asked how they were, and then he said, how is your age father you told me about? Is he still living? They replied, your servant, our father, is still alive and well. And they bow down and prostrate themselves before him. Again and again, right? Wow. Talk about your prophecy being fulfilled, your dream coming true, right? When was last time your dream that was seemed impossible become true? Reality. And it took 22 years. Wow. God, two God, one day is like a thousand years for sure. And Joseph looked about and saw his brother Benjamin his own mother's son. And he asked, is this your youngest son, brother, the one you told me about? And he said, God be gracious to you, my son, deeply moved. At the sight of the brother, Joseph hurried out and looked for the place to weep. He went into the private room and wept there. Wow, literally, um, we met someone, Jenny and I were having lunch. Uh, with this another couple from Korea, pastor friend. And you know, it's great when you meet somebody in the restaurant and they honor you by paying for your bill. And it was, uh, it was an expensive lunch too, but we met someone that we met since 1990. So 33 years ago, we met 33 years ago. She was a college student, I think. And she was part of the Saturday's inspiration group. In olden days, we used to flip transparencies and overhead projector. And she was called Namsuni, or the one was in charge. But now she's a realtor, and and she was so good to see us. And it was so good. To, of course, I recognized her right away. I mean, after 33 years, because we saw her when she was already in college. But see, for Joseph, not seeing his Benjamin for 22 years when... I mean, he was only 17, right? So his younger brother um, was younger. And after 22, you, you know, you grow beard and you become a fully grown man, right? So, but to make sure that he does not know that, is to ask, is he the, the one that you're talking about? Yes, sir. And he was deeply moved, deeply moved. Um, he hurried out. And look for a place to weep. He went into his private room and wept there. The word weeping is way back. Way he back. In Hebrew is to bemoan. It's silent shouting of agony. Bemoaning would be silent shouting in agony. That would be more of a Korean transliteration. I'm like, <laughs> like that. But not, not much sound. Right. You don't shout out and cry like wailing, but no, it's bemoaning like, uh, uh. wow. 
He was agonized. But the testing has to continue. He cannot just let his emotion take over and because he wants to make sure that these brothers are willing to sacrifice their lives for his younger brother. Because they'll have option. You know, they're, he's going to put the silver cup. And you know the story. And uh, Joseph's going to watch and see if they're going to just send Joseph, uh, Benjamin to his palace. Or are they all going to come back? That's the key. That's the test. So he wants to set it up so he cannot reveal his identity yet. So he bemoans. He weeps in private. He's silent, shouting in agony. After he had washed his face, he came out and controlling himself and said, serve the food. They served him by himself, the brothers by themselves, an Egyptian who ate with him by themselves. Because Egyptian could not eat with Hebrews for that is detestable to Egyptian. It's disgusting. It's abhorrent. It's um, Egyptian thought such a highly of themselves in that time. Egyptian thought they were literally next to God, and everybody else is like, "Oh, we don't, we don't, cannot sit, we cannot share the same table, right?" This is kind of sense of uh, um, holiness about them. This is what Calvin writes. How great was the pride of the nation, for whence did it arise that they so utterly detested the Hebrews, unless because they thought themselves alone to be pure and holy in the world and acceptable to God. Therefore, suspicious person vainly attempt to come, claim his privilege for themselves, seeing they carry their impurity within and are destitute of sincerity. <laughs> I love the way Calvin writes, you know. Let them have it. Who do you think you are? You're a godless nation and you act so holy, pure, right? It's vain attempt. Then men had been seated before him in order of their age, from the firstborn to the youngest, and they looked at each other in astonishment, marveled, dumbfounded, marveled, and said, what happened? What happened? Hmm. The same kind of uh, language is used in Hebrews 8.10 when Jesus uh, heard of this man. He said, he was marveled like, wow, that's cool. <laughs> Dumbfounded to be astonished. Right? When portion were served to them from Joseph's table, Benjamin's portion was five times as much anyone else's. So they feasted and drank freely with him. Pulpit commentary writes, the firstborn according to his birthright and the youngest according to his youth. And the men marvel at one another, probably thinking that Joseph must have been supernaturally enlightened to discover so exactly the age of strangers, right? Because Joseph said, he goes first, next. The seating location, uh, especially in Asian cultural context, is very, very strong. Right, who sits on the head table, right? It's usually by age, right? Uh, maybe in in Western, maybe by fame, their wealth, or whatever. But uh, Eastern, it's always almost always by age. Age is that determines your position in social structure. If it's hierarchical, and if everybody is unknown, then first thing they go for is age. It is so interesting to watch like a game show or even a Korean program where, I mean, these are all superstars, like, you know, BTS. I mean, they, I mean, these are superstars. They're global uh, singers, celebrities. And yet within among them, they call it young or oh, and because age determines, it doesn't matter how good of a singer you are, you call someone young and they become your patron, your cop and you become your ur if you're younger, right? So when we say tonga, same age, then it's equal. It's all by age. <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? And so they are wondering, how did this prince figure out our age like that? That's astounding. That's amazing. That's what they're saying. Woo, crazy. So do you experience God answering your prayer? 
Did God ever answer your prayer or dream, your vision? And it's so supernatural, like, wow, there's no way God could have done that, right? Mm. Wow, amazing. So, Joseph saw Benjamin and wept. I pray that that weeping of joy, that weeping of relief, weeping of, wow, God is real. God is alive. To become reality in your life as well. Amen. So, Father God, I thank you. I dedicate this day unto you, Lord. We want to see your kingdom come, your will be done, and we'll be faithful. Whether it may take 22 years in coming, but we'll believe, 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 believe that you are real and you're going to answer our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you guys. See you tomorrow. Mwah.